according to Joseph Smith, is not just knowing God exists, but it's knowing that your life is being lived in accordance to his plan, that your life is being lived in the way that he has, is directing. And that, is, that has been a, the, a, an evidence of faith throughout my life, is to know that God continues to speak to us. He continues to direct us through prophets, just as he did in ancient days, but also very personally. I remember being at the, I was teaching school. I graduated in elementary education and I started teaching school. And I have a dear friend in California and we were visiting their family and he said to me, what are you gonna do with your life? And I thought, well, I'm kind of doing it. <laughs> you know, this is okay. what I thought I was gonna do is just teach school and love kids and, and help them. And, he says, no, no. He says, you've got to go back to school. Hmm. I thought, I just got out of school. Why do I want to go back? And he, uh, he, he was persistent enough that I at least checked into it. And I found out that if I taught four additional years, I taught three. If I taught four additional years, the district would help me pay for a master's degree. And I thought, that's a great deal. So I told my friend, four, four more years and I'll go back to school. And he says, okay, that's a good plan. But then God changed that plan. That was my plan. That's what I was do doing. But I was on an airplane. I was reading the biography of David B. Haight, an apostle I admire a great deal. And I got finished, and I wasn't quite finished with the book. I got finished with the plane trip, but I wasn't quite finished with the book, so I kind of went and sat down someplace and finished the book. And just was kind of in the afterglow of having read that wonderful book about a very wonderful hero. And I was walking out of the airport in Salt Lake City and in the old terminal, there's a big world. Have you seen that, Karen? There's a big world on oh. the floor. Oh, yes. You've seen that. Mm -hmm. And it's a, now it's kind of covered by all the security lights. Right, right. But at the time, it was just there. And as I was walking across the world, literally, I was walking across the world, mm. And all of a sudden it just hit me that I needed to go back to school right then. That I couldn't wait four years. I couldn't afford the time. And I stood there on top of the world. Interesting. And just felt such an impression that my influence would be felt beyond my classroom. Hmm. That my classroom would be the world. And I kept walking out to long-term parking thinking, how am I going to tell my wife that I'm supposed to go back to school now because that means that the district's not going to help and how are we going to afford this? And the, the impression came again that said, I needed to do this right now. And I stopped. It was strong enough that I actually stopped and I prayed and I said, is it, am I really feeling this? Or is this just in my mind? Is this just something that I'm creating? Is this just something that I'm kind of getting emotionally worked up over? Mm -hmm. And once again, that impression came, the consistency. Young people say to me, how do I know whether it's really God talking or whether it's just my emotions or whether I'm just, you know, uh, if it's just momentary. And I always tell them that in my experience, it has been consistency. When God speaks to me, I know it because he doesn't stop. The impression comes and it comes again and it comes again and it comes again. Until you act one way or the other. You resist it or you follow yeah. it. You're right. He's generous that way. And I just felt this impression so strongly. And I went home and I thought, how do I tell Debbie? How do mm. I tell Debbie? And then Debbie greeted me at the door and said, Brad, you'll never believe it. I had the coolest experience. <laughs> and she had had a similar prompting that said that now is the time to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Well, long story short, had I not gone back to school at that very moment, mm -hmm. I would not have had my master's at a time when another professor was leaving to serve a mission and they needed someone to teach her classes. And I was right there. And that's how I ended up joining the faculty at BYU at a very young age when most people would not have been considered. And that position at BYU has then led me to be able to do 
many of the other things that I've done. And if I've been able to have any kind of impact in the world, if I've been able to help one person, a lot of that goes back to the fact that I listened to that prompting, I followed it, and that God was willing to say to me, the timing on this is important. Not just the education, but the timing. And, and a lot of the things that I've been able to do since have gone back to that turning